Hello, everyone, Andy here playing Farming Simulator 22 on Elm Creek. Another day and another uh, corrupt save game later. Uh, seems to be a theme going on here as of late. Everyone, yes, had the uh, save game corrupt here again today when I tried to uh, load up here and start uh, playing. Uh, this time it was the items XML again. This is the uh, second time in this series here so far where I've actually had the items XML corrupt. And it, when I say corrupt, I mean, it is literally corrupt. It's full of gobbledygook literally full of gobbledygook nonsense so i don't know what's going on with that but that's kind of weird uh again last episode of I mean, that was a completely different issue i think something with the i don't know if that was the uh, fire or not the fire hydrant the water hydrant mod or just if something with the water hydrant and something corrupted the same i don't know what that was but uh something definitely didn't go right there so anyway, uh, this episode of it, uh, ran out of water at the greenhouse here i was working on uh, fast forward in time here through winter and, uh, yes, I noticed, like, hey, we're not getting any money here. The money is going down instead of up. So I went and checked, and, oh, sure enough, we're out of water at the greenhouse. So the greenhouse, I don't know, maybe, like, six months worth of water, I'm thinking, or something like that, everyone. Give or take a little bit. Uh, yes, I am. No, I'm paying for water here. Uh, again, I did have that water hydrant right down by the greenhouse, so it was nice and convenient. But, oh, well, uh, I might try to get again here at some point. Uh... Not sure. We'll, we'll see. Let's maybe see if I can place it down. Maybe just something went wrong last time. I don't know. Uh, I believe that was an official mod off the official farming simulator mod hub, if I remember correctly. That one, so, it seems a little odd that that water hydrant would cause problem. I, I'm thinking I'm going to just something when I placed it down, something didn't go right, and it corrupted something. That's my thought, but I don't know. I could be wrong. So, I don't know. Again, if uh, any of you folks out there watching have used the water hydrant... And it's worked fine for you. It'd be appreciated uh, if you'd leave a comment down below and let me know that's worked fine for you. Or if it hasn't worked fine for you, let me know either way. Because uh, uh, if it has worked fine for you folks, I will probably give it a try here again. Uh, but if you folks say it's, like, broken, then, uh, yeah, we'll probably just have to get rid of that mod. Because that's, uh, well. Uh, we could go... Let's uh, get this unloaded here a minute. Um, I've been told I can get water for free at the ponds. I'm not sure where's the closest pond around here. Because we're located here. Let's see once here. Yeah, where's the closest pond? There's not really any pond. Oh, there's one down here. It's not too far. Oh, there's one over here. That one might, uh, and there's one over there too. Okay, so we got three that aren't terribly far away, but I don't know, for the little bit of money it costs to buy water, everyone. Eh, I think we'll just, uh, we'll just pay for it for the moment. Uh, you know, get them in. The whole concept here of having to fill the greenhouse with water. I don't know. I just find that to be extremely odd, everyone. Uh, we read a comment about that here last episode as well. I forget who the individual was, but they were talking about the same thing, like having to fill the animals up with water, having to bring water to the greenhouses. Has Giants not heard of pipes? Like, pipes haven't been invented. And in fact, they were invented like uh, thousands of years ago. Um, back with the aqueducts, right? So yeah, I don't know. Weird. But whatever. Seems to me that's the way Giants wants to do it, so that's, that's, I guess that's how we have to do it. Oh, and uh, speaking of which, Evan, uh, we're now currently in the month of March here. I think we need to go so one more month here before we can start uh, planting. Yes, I want to plant uh, soybeans on the fields, Evan. Uh, so we're in the month of March here, and that's, that's probably good enough. We might uh, stop at March here and do a little tillage. We've got some tillage work, I think, to do on the fields. But uh, since last episode, Evan, I finished harvesting the sorghum on... Oh, what was the number of the field here? Field 31. So I finished harvesting the sorghum on field 31. Went ahead and sold that. We made $67,000 off that. Hey, we'll take it, right? I uh, had to sell that to Goldcrest Valley, so I had to rent the train and all that good stuff. Uh, it cost $1,000 per hour to rent the train. You only need like the train for like five minutes I'm going to sell it. So I don't know if you even have to pay the whole thousand or how that works, but... Just notice this tractor has additional gauges down on the right side uh, support there. That's interesting. Hmm, whatever. So yeah, anyway, like I said, I got the sorghum sold. Then basically just uh, fast forwarding time here, uh, taking care of the bees. And yeah, unfortunately, I didn't notice that the greenhouse had ran out of water. I did check it. I don't know. I think it was like January. Or maybe it was December. It must have been December or something. I checked it. It had 8,000 liters left. I'm like, oh, okay, that should be enough to last us. Uh, until April, but apparently it wasn't. That only lasted us until uh, I think it was at February we ran out. Actually, it must have been January we ran out. It must have used a lot of water here at some point, because based on the finances here, we've been getting about $3,300 per day from this, it looks like, give or take. I'm not sure because it varies a little bit here, so I don't know exactly 
and what it's making, but roughly uh, 3300 per day. And yeah, January was the last month we made any money on it. And that's weird. How did it use eight? It must use 8,000 liters just like that or something. That was weird because it had 8,000 liters and I checked it. I thought it was either December or January because I went down and was like, ah, I better go look at the greenhouse. See what's else? I was like, oh, 8,000. That, yeah, that should be plenty. Yes, not. And I do need to check the bees here again as well. So again, thanks you, thank you to your folks for uh, reminding me to check the bees all the time. I keep <laughs> forgetting to check them. Oh yeah, there's another pallet there again. I need to uh, switch this pallet thing out, everyone. There is, oh, there's a couple of mods out there now with larger pallet spawner areas. Uh, this one, everyone, seems like it holds mostly one. Occasionally, it will hold two. So, sorry about the complaint, everyone, but come on, giants, really? Yeah, I don't know. That, that seems a little ridiculous to me. I mean, uh, what what Giants was thinking with that one, I don't know. But that uh, that is pretty stupid, if you ask me. It's one of those uh, things where, like, the Giants even actually, like, play test this game, everyone, just to see once, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, pretty stupid. You know, again, I mean, the problem is once the one pallet fills up, it stops your production. And guess what? Unless you're like checking it every hour, guess what happens? That's right. You're, it fills up, everyone, and you're done producing. And it it's not like you can just, I mean, basically what I'm doing is I'm checking it once a day, or at least trying to check it once a day. But in this case, that's probably not actually often enough. I probably should really be checking it every few hours. And then as soon as it's full, you got to get it off there. And uh, yeah, like I said, don't know what Giants was thinking when they did that one of them, but. And they, uh, yeah, screwed that one up. Ask me, you know what? I'm gonna pull that. Ah, that's fine. That's standard, I guess. That's not gonna hurt nothing. Okay, we're just gonna park that there for the moment. So we're sitting on three hundred forty-three thousand dollars, Evan. Ooh, ooh, that was close. That was close. Just about put the tractor in the pit there. We're gonna put the tractor in the pit. I really need to uh, repair my equipment, Evan. Like, badly. Very, very badly. I was thinking about putting up another... I was thinking maybe... What are these? Two thousand... No, ten thousand dollars a piece? I think they're like ten thousand dollars a piece. I was thinking about maybe putting up like four more of them or something like that. That's what I was thinking. Let's go over to construction here. And... Let's see, no, we don't want... No, production. That's what we want. We want greenhouses. Large green... Yeah, large greenhouse. Ten thousand dollars. Thinking about this, everyone. If we're making three thousand dollars plus per day... Within three to four days, I mean, this greenhouse has paid for itself. Now, we do have to pay for the water, so that takes, you know, a few hundred, a couple thousand dollars off the top of it. So still, within four to five days, I mean, we have paid for that greenhouse. That is, uh, I think that's a really good return on investment there, if you ask me. I mean, uh, again, at least in the past, I mean, when it came to greenhouses, that's why I typically never messed with greenhouses. Just, you did the math, everyone, it's like, these things don't math out. They're not worth anything. You're, you're spending... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 in-game days to pay for it. Keep in mind, everyone, this is Farming Simulator 19 and 17. There was no seasons, so if you did more than probably 20 days in a save game, you're probably doing pretty good. You know, maybe 30, 40, and you're... So, yeah, if, if you only pay play 40 days in a save game, everyone, you've never paid off your greenhouse. Or you've maybe just paid off your greenhouse. So, but yeah, now that now that we can pay it off in a couple of days, and again, keep in mind, everyone, when we're talking about growing season now, a growing season is 12 days, at least. Yeah, this this uh, this is a pretty good uh, pretty good money maker, if you ask me. So anyway, we're gonna put uh, I think we're gonna put two more of these down. Try to get them kind of lined up here. And I won't bother uh, filling up on the water in the, right now, everyone. I will uh, I will take care of that off camera. Won't uh, put you folks to the torture of uh, filling those up. Okay, looks like four of them. I think we're going to call that good. And then I will uh, get these all set up. I'll probably, uh, this one's strawberries, so maybe we'll do a lettuce and uh, maybe another lettuce. And then what was the other one? Tomato, I think. So yeah, maybe we'll like, we'll do all three of them. Some lettuce. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're, we're growing lettuce. Yes, it's just lettuce. That's all we're growing. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, we got some uh, tillage to do out on fields 30, 31, and 32, everyone. Now, if you notice, going to my screen here, 
Uh, 31 I have not touched at all. 30 and 32 are on stubble tillage. Now I'm not entirely sure what we need to do to get from stubble tillage to seed bed, everyone. Uh, we ran the cultivator across it. But that gave us stubble tillage. So what cultivator do I need to actually get from stubble tillage to seed bed? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, a power harrow comes to mind. Uh, uh, yeah, prepares for the next scene. Uh, possibly a roller. Uh, you can prove the upper soil quality of your fields. That seems like just the thing right there. So I'm thinking we might pick up a roller here. 12.3 meters. And I think we can afford this here. The other option I, when I was looking at, not under cultivators, uh, was it disc harrows? Does shallow cultivation. This might be an option as well. Uh, those are relatively pricey, though, unless we get, like, one of the smaller ones, which that's not terrible. Yeah, 4.7 meters, 6.7, oh, six point, uh, yeah, 6 meters, 6.7 tons. That one's 5 meters. Wouldn't mind checking out one of these uh, Case or Kinsey's at some point. Uh, looking at this, everyone, uh, I talked about this before, but I'm wondering if this is a typo here on the Kinsey. It says 615 horsepower. I'm wondering if that's supposed to be 515 horsepower. Because, like, the case is heavier, it's wider, and it can go faster. But yet, the Kinsey, smaller, lighter, goes the same speed, I guess. But takes almost an additional 65 horsepower. I don't know, that doesn't seem quite right. At least based on the way the game works, anyway. I don't know, maybe real life that actually is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, shall we go for a roller up? Maybe we at least one. Shall we lease one? Let's try that. Before we, uh, like, waste, uh, you know, 41000 let's try leasing one. $2,000. Not bad. The other option, everyone, would be... Where is it here? Not planters. A mulcher. But I don't know if a mulcher... I wouldn't mind trying a mulcher here, everyone, on field 31. So, actually, let's do that, too. We're going to lease a mulcher here as well. Actually, if we're going to lease one... Is that the one we want to get? I think I'm going to go with this one, because I like the look of this one here, everyone. Kind of looks a little more American here. Looks like something you'd pull behind in a cultivator or something. How much horsepower did I need for that? 130. Okay, so we could put the John Deere 7810 here on that one. And we'll hopefully get some uh, comments for a moment. I mean, there's another reason I want to do this here. Because uh, in the comments, uh, someone said maybe the reason the weeder doesn't work is because you're not fully preparing. Oh, we knocked over the mailbox. Oh my goodness, we did that one. No, I mean, that's a, that's definitely no, uh-uh. I would never do that. <coughs> never. Nope. But anyway, someone said if you uh, get seed bed prep, then the weeder might work. So we're going to give that a try here. Uh, I figure it's worth a try. And besides, I mean, we should have the fields up to seed bed prep anyway, if you ask me. I just haven't really uh, done a whole lot with that up to this point because we really haven't had the money for like additional cultivating equipment. Oh, speaking of which, while we're heading to the shop here, we can uh, repair some of this equipment too. That'd be a good idea, right? Okay, and get you headed to the shop here as well. Wrong button. There we go. We don't need to be in the shop here just as of yet. Okay, and go to and start. Let's see if he uh, stays in the lane here all the way to the shop. Okay, and while we're traveling to the shop, it should only take a couple of seconds here. We'll uh, read some uh, comments here in a moment. Uh, Paul was saying, sorghum, not a common crop in my area, but I've seen fields planted in the past few years. It's chopped for silage rather than harvested for seed. My neighbor cuts his with a hay bind, and then he hires a custom chopper to chop it for silage and blows it into a silo. He says, watching other farmers, you can always learn something. That is true. And at least where I live, everyone, I've only ever seen one field. Uh, with one farmer that has done sorghum. And as far as I know, they've always combined it. They've harvested it for, I'm assuming the seed, right? I don't know what else they harvest it for, so I'm assuming the seed. And it's always interesting to them too, because when they combine the sorghum, it looks like they just take like the top part of the plant, so they don't uh, take very much of the plant off. 
you know, typically like with wheat or oats or something like that, I'm on, you know, they're caught in that barely close to the ground, somewhat. Or is the sorghum, I'm just like, whoa, it looks like the whole field's still standing yet. Not sure how much horsepower this roller needs. I'm pretty sure the uh, old 9470 RX here can handle it. Actually, how much horsepower does it need? Let's go check. Kind of curious. Where are my rollers? There they are. 160. So, yeah, we could have pulled this with a 7810 as well if we wanted to. Could have maybe at least the larger one, but hey, this is what, 12 meters wide? That's plenty wide enough for me at the moment. Better than any of our other equipment. Our current other widest piece of equipment is the cultivator. Yeah, the cultivator, which I believe is 6 meters. So. Okay, Jim was saying great videos. Always keep up the uh, great work. Hey, thank you very much for that, Jim. Always uh, enjoy reading your comments, by the way. Uh, he was saying maybe someone should come out with a greenhouse extension mod where water pipes appear and you can arrange them any way you want. Ooh, just um, for those who remember, what was the name of it? Animal Extension? I think it was Animal Extension, right? The Animal Extension mod back in 19? Yeah, where you could actually like put down like water pipes that would automatically fill your animals. Brilliant idea, if you ask me. Uh, I said what you would eliminate the need to haul water to the greenhouses uh, should work similar to the oh yeah actually he says as much should work similar to the animal extension mod at night so, yeah that would be a there's a great mod idea if you ask me again I don't understand ever why giants thinks like bring water to the group that's I don't know Okay, let's uh, try lowering this down here. Don't know if it's going to do anything or not. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, oh, look at that, everyone. Look at that. I should probably really get the rocks picked up, too, shouldn't I? Yeah, I really should, everyone. There we go. Now, this should be changing this to seed bed, I do believe, right? Yep. It's a little hard to tell, everyone, because I personally I haven't even noticed myself sometimes. I just look. It looks like, oh, okay, yeah, it looks like that's probably seed bed. But no, it's actually... Stubble tillage and seed bed. Just a slightly different shade there. Not not terribly different, but a slightly different shade. Okay, then we're going to try something different here on the other field. Because we got uh, sorghum and it has relatively tall stubble left behind, I'm thinking this might be the better choice. I'm not sure. I'm also not entirely sure, Roman, how much this, like, affects the overall yield of your crop. Like, does this really make a difference? I don't know. I'm assuming probably a couple percentage points, I would assume, but I'm not sure, you know, exactly what that would be. Okay, then R.Y. Dozman, and this is kind of why we're uh, trying what we're trying here, everyone. Uh, R.Y. Dozman was saying, I believe the weeds have something to do with you previous, how you previously prepped the field. It says, I used a subsoiler to prep my field. And when I used the weeder, it got rid of all the weeds. But when I used the no-till seed drill, I can no longer get rid of the weeds with the weeder. Which actually, when you think about that, everyone, if uh, Giants actually has it set that way in the game, that is kind of cool. I don't know that that's if... Yeah, I don't know if that's what Giants intended or not. That seems like a bit of a stretch. No offense to Giants, but uh, maybe they did. But that would be very realistic, if you ask me. Um, if you're attempting to, like, do a minimal tillage, no-till situation, typically a lot of times, I mean, it is harder to get rid of the weeds because uh, tillage, well, let's, let's face it, I mean, tillage does a really good job on weeds. There ain't no weeds surviving no tillage. Oh, uh, yes, and this is kind of just, like, mulching it down. Now, the question is, everyone, now that it's mulched it down... What is actually, what is this considered? Is this considered stubble? I don't know. I can't tell. I'll have to do a little bit more, I guess. I wonder what this is considered here. GPS. Oh, I gotta say, I love the GPS. I love the GPS. And I like how the lines, you know, will eventually disappear here too. So they stay on for a couple seconds and then they just kind of disappear. That's kind of cool. Feature I wouldn't mind seeing possibly integrated into Whoopsters actual GS mod. Yeah, that's the GS mod, by the way. 
So yeah, anyway, we're going to give this a try here. Kind of essentially give the weeder one more chance. See once if we uh, prep our fields this way. Well, that way there and this way here. Uh, see once if it makes a difference, Evan. We'll, we'll see. Oh, that gets rid of the grass there, too. Okay, no did. I'll be a little careful about that one. Oh, and, uh, oh, should we plow these fields together? Hmm. I was debating on putting these fields together, and I'm thinking we're probably going to do that, because I don't see... Like, if you were farming this in real life, everyone, you would most likely probably plow these fields together. I don't think you'd be leaving three separate fields. Or maybe you'll leave two or something. Just one crop and one, one crop and the other, but... Most likely, if you were farming this in real life, you'd plow them together. So I think we're going to go ahead and probably do that. Uh, Gump, Gump was saying, I might have to check you out on multiplayer. If your multiplayer server works. The other day, I think multiplayer was down. Uh, more than likely, the multiplayer server, at least my multiplayer server, is up, everyone. It's whether or not you can get on it. Um, Giants seems like they've been having a lot of issues here the last uh, week or so. Ever since the game's been released, their servers have just been up and down, and oh my goodness, everyone. A lot, a lot of issues with multiplayer. And again, it's not necessarily that the servers themselves are down. It's the fact, everyone, that Giants servers are down. And when Giants servers are down, everyone, you cannot access your own server. So even though your server might be up, if Giants server's down, eh, you can't get on it. And then, of course, to top it off, if you have the Steam version, well, then Steam has to be up and Giant servers have to be up. So, like a double whammy there if you have the Steam version. Yeah, I definitely want to see if I can pick these rocks up, everyone. Thinking maybe we should invest some money in that here as well. If we buy the John Deere Cedar, which I think I'm probably planning on doing, that is going to run us, uh, it was like $240,000. Although, looking at it, everyone, if you do the, uh, do the math on this here, or look at the money... Where's the planners here? You look at the two biggest planners in the game here. This one, yeah, that's 12 meters, so I don't know. It's up there, but definitely not as big as the uh, John Deere and the Kinsey here. The John Deere 7.8 meters, plants at 9 miles per hour, 8.4 tons, holds 3,524 liters of product. It can plant all those, but it does not fertilize. Just seed, right? And, oh, and it takes 340 horsepower. The Kinsey... Just slightly larger, 18.2 meters, 14.5 tons, holds almost double. Actually, no, I think that is double, exactly double, right? A little more than double, 7,068 liters of product. It's probably seed and fertilizer, by the way. So it's probably still about the same amount of seed, just doubles it with a fertilizer. And then it goes two miles per hour faster. So, yeah, and it fertilizes, and it's about uh, 60... Actually, I think it's exactly $60,500 $60, cheaper. So, I don't know, everyone. I was going to get the John Deere, but then looking at the numbers, I went, uh, I don't know, that Kinsey, everyone. Oh, based on the numbers. I'd like to try the John Deere, at least to say we tried it, everyone. But I don't know, we'll, we'll see once here. It doesn't fertilize, apparently. Which I don't get why, why not have an option to fertilize. That should be an option, everyone. You know, if it fertilized that one, I would say it was probably a no-brainer. Hey, we'll, we'll get the John Deere. Yeah, maybe it's a little more expensive, and it goes a little bit slower, but hey. Right on the GPS? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, you just couldn't quite see the lines there. Oh, and you know what I forgot about? Ah, I was going to repair my tractor while we were at the shop. Oh, well. Doesn't seem to be affecting it too badly. We're still going 11 miles an hour. Uh, Robert was saying, I believe once your weeds pass a certain percentage, you have to use spray to bring them below or at 25%. Then the weeders will work perfectly fine. Well, here's the thing there, Robert. And this is kind of... I was, I was trying to emphasize this here a little bit last episode. Maybe I didn't do a good job of it. But when it comes to the weeds, Evan, I'm literally skipping one day. Like, I've planted the field. I am then sleeping through the night until the next day. So your, your crops, everyone, will not grow until the next day. 
And when the crops grow, that's when the weeds show up. So, literally, I cannot, like, do anything any sooner than when I'm doing it. Like, the very next day in the game, everyone, once the weeds have showed up, I am weeding them. So there's literally nothing you can do, I don't think, unless you, like, I don't know, does it work to pre-weed the field? Wouldn't make sense, too, but... You, like, run the weeder on the field before the crops actually start to grow. So, again, I'm on, I've planted the field. I slept through the night. The next day, the field has started to grow, and that's, of course, when the weeds show up. But, you know, I think what Robert's getting at there is I maybe need to weed sooner. But, again, I, mean, I don't think you can weed any sooner. Interesting, by the way, I see that when we're mulching. I guess that's what this is supposed to be, mulching here. It is basically changing the field to nothing. So I'm kind of curious at this point, I'm like, what do I run across this field here to get it to seed bed? Can I run a cultivator? Can I run a high speed disc? Hmm. Guess we're going to find out. Uh, many tricks he was saying, use the weeder, then spray herbicide. You have 0% weeds. Even if you just use herbicide, you'll have some weeds. Oh, so according to many tricks here, even if you use just spray, you'll still have some weeds. That's interesting. The one weeder with the row cleaners is the best one. It takes the weeds percent down to zero. One weeder with the row cleaners. One weeder with the row cleaners, huh? Wait, so there's actually differences in the weeders? Oh my goodness, I mean, that's... I'm assuming he's probably talking this one here. They can only be used in the first growing stages, right? Hmm. Don't know. Like, there's actually percentages. That's kind of weird. Like, one weeder works better than another weeder. I find it hard to believe that giants would actually incorporate that. Not that I'm complaining if they did. I, wanted to just, <laughs> I find it hard to believe they would actually incorporate something like that. Uh, Ben was saying, Randy, your combine needs repair. Uh, yeah, so does my tractor. My other tractor. The other tractor. The cultivator. Don't know if the plow does or not. Not sure on that one. The plow probably does. Uh, let's see what's here. What else? Uh, did I mention the cultivator? The weeder needs repair. Yeah, pretty much everything needs repair, one. I just keep forgetting to do it. And don't feel like driving down to the shop to do it. And to be honest, it's not really affecting anything that I can tell. I don't know. Maybe it is. Reducing the, uh... Resaleability, resellability of our equipment, but then again, I don't plan on selling my equipment, so yeah. That's E. Bernie was saying good job. Thank you very much for that. Christopher was saying good video. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Farmer Rob was saying I don't think modded trailers are supported because I downloaded a dump trailer on the Mod Hub, and the only option I have is go to in the AI as well. So I've gotten a lot of comments on that. Uh, when it comes to modded trailers, do modded trailers work with the AI helper in Farming Simulator 22? And so far in the comments, everyone, it doesn't sound very good. It, it sounds like a lot of the modded trailers are not working with the AI helper. I don't know, everyone, if that's just because modded trailers don't work with the AI helper or modders are doing something wrong. Not sure. One of the two. So yeah, that's kind of too bad. Of course, we have the same problem with the JM gravity wing we have. It does not work with the mod or the AI helper. Uh, Dean was also saying your combine needs repair. Yep, it does. It needs it quite badly. As does the tractor, the other tractor, the other tractor, the cultivator, the plow, the weeder. Seems like I'm missing a piece of equipment. Oh, the cedar. Yep, the cedar. That's what I'm missing. I knew I was missing one of them. Anyway, I've been looking at the time. It looks like it is time to wrap it up here for this episode. So on that note, you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to uh, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.